Flying over the temporary sands of Ainsdale, it is interesting to reflect on how the temporary airbase of Woodvale, born of war, has become such a permanent feature of the ensuing peace. Fifty years ago, landing was not such a leisurely affair, yet it was so much sweeter. For the pilot, it meant that he had survived once again in the deadly defence of Liverpool's port and its peoples. Although the threat of the Luftwaffe has passed away and the Cold War has turned to glasnost, events such as the Falklands and Gulf conflicts demonstrate the need for eternal vigilance. Each generation picks up that torch, and although Woodvale is no longer a frontline airbase, it still helps shape the men and women who will defend Britain and her allies, both now and in the future. Over the years, thousands of pilots have gained their wings using the services provided by the base under the careful eye of its expert personnel. At the heart of the base today is the training of young pilots from the region's universities. The Jubilee is both a celebration of RAF Woodvale's past and a time to reflect upon the new challenges its graduates will face in the future. The 50th anniversary of the uh, Air Training Corps, Liverpool University Air Squadron, Manchester and Salford University Air Squadron and of course RAF Woodvale. Now to organise an event like this with uh, static aircraft, I think there are about 18 static aircraft out there, all the memorabilia in this tent that we had this morning and we'll have again tomorrow morning between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, uh, sorry between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock uh, takes an awful lot of doing, not to mention this evening and the um, air display tomorrow. I'd like to thank all those people, uh, and there are very many of you, who have helped us to organise the event. In particular, I'd like to thank my project officer, Flight Lieutenant David McKenna, and his assistant, Jane Ferguson. as a temporary airfield for the defence of Liverpool and it has remained a temporary airfield to this very day. <laughs> Although we've made some minor changes over the past few years, um, <laughs> not uh, an awful lot has changed and it is still not an established airfield and as such it has never had or never uh, qualified for a station plaque. And I'm delighted to say this evening that the CNC has agreed to permit us to use the support command plaque with our own station name on it. And now I'd like to call on our AOC, Air Vice Marshal Austin, to unveil the RAF, after only 50 years, Woodvale <laughs> Station Plaque. <laughs> can say is I declare this plaque, which I'm assured is under this piece of cloth, <laughs> unveiled. It's been stolen by Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> After the years of rehabilitation, it was war again, and Liverpool became the gateway to the western approach. And this time, it was a grim struggle for survival, a struggle kept alive by Britain's mastery of the sea, but a mastery that was challenged to its limits by the ruthlessness of the Luftwaffe and the German U-boats. And from the cellar in the shadow of the town hall operated the nerve centre of the convoy system, 
which played its part against tremendous odds with the dogged courage that has always been associated with the Merchant Marine. For the first time in a great war, there was no front line, and the battle was waged on our own doorsteps. The Luftwaffe did its worst, with inhuman success. In the May Blitz alone, 3,966 people in the four Merseyside boroughs lost their lives, and 3,812 were seriously injured. 10,000 of their homes were completely destroyed, and 184,000 damaged. A catastrophe from which it would seem almost impossible to recover. It was this catastrophe that convinced the RAF of the need for an all-weather airfield in close proximity to the port. Many sites were investigated, but the flat farming lands between Formby and Ainsdale proved the most suitable. The bypass also gave good road access. The main runway was parallel to the Liverpool Southport railway line, and fighters could cover a large sector of the northwest. Started in mid-41, the first personnel officially entered the main gates on the 25th of October 1941, although the base was far from complete. Number 308 Polish Squadron was the first to use Woodvale's OD Station Code. The rapid building of three Bellman hangars and the admin block allowed the base to function. Nearby Cavendish House became the officer's mess, and many buildings were requisitioned, with Hall Farm being used as station sick quarters. By the time the Countess of Jersey visited, Woodvale was home to over 2,000 mixed personnel of many nationalities. Heavy air engagements took their toll, and many brave men gave their lives. 308 and 315 Spitfire squadrons served with distinction, but were affected by battle fatigue. Resting, regrouping and retraining were vital parts of Woodvale's role in the war effort. The Royal Air Force, along with the Polish contingent and the Royal Canadian Air Force, lost many men, as graveyards in and around Southport and Formby testify. Although departed, their courage and spirit lives on. The debt owed by the free world to such individuals can never be fully repaid, except by keeping up our defences so that their sacrifice was not in vain. The Jubilee is also a time to look back with awe and respect at such men and their aircraft. Remarkable men needed remarkable machines and many became legends. The Bowfighter inflicted terrible damage to enemy shipping whilst the Blenheim bomber defended Allied troops from attack. The deadly hurricane destroyed more of the Luftwaffe than any other aircraft. Veteran Tiger Moths made excellent basic trainers and many pilots owed their lives to the expertise gained in flying them. Typhoons provided tactical air support as the Axis powers retreated and the tide of war turned in the Allies' favour. The Mosquito, or Wooden Wonder, performed many roles. The Mustang acted as fighter escort to Bomber Command raids but it is the Spitfire that best symbolises the Bulldog tenacity that helped to win the war. Woodvale's role diminished with the end of hostilities, but the temporary station continued and many types of aircraft graced its runways. The fleet air arm took over briefly, and many different squadrons used the airfield throughout the late 40s. Despite the lessening of activities, the arrival of the jet age as heralded by the meteor and the operation of the thumb temperature and humidity flights helped Woodvale to continue. 
The present role as a training base began with the arrival of Liverpool University Air Squadron in July 51. Manchester followed in 53, becoming Manchester and Salford University Air Squadron in 75, and both remain today. The 60s saw the arrival of civil and commercial flying at Woodvale. Cherokees and Cessnas belonging to the Southport and West Lancashire Aero Clubs have given many the chance to experience flying's unique thrills. Today, flying is a pleasure and a privilege, so very different from 50 years ago. Lie in the dark and listen. It's clear tonight that they're flying high. Hundreds of them, thousands perhaps, riding the icy, moonlit sky. Men, machinery, bombs and maps, altimeters and guns and charts, coffee, sandwiches, fleece-lined boots, bones and muscles, and minds and hearts. English saplings with English roots, deep in the earth they've left below. Lie in the dark and let them go. Today it is the young cadets of the University Air Squadrons that carry on the work of Churchill's few. Squadron Leader Wright. What part do the University Air Squadrons play in recruiting new pilots into full-time RAF careers? The University Air Squadrons take students directly from the University. There are three categories of students. We have the cadetships, who are sponsored right the way through. We have bursaries, who have um, a small payment at the end of each term. And we have the volunteer reserve pilots. And all three categories uh, contribute to the Air Force's intake of all ranks and um, certainly all trades in the Air Force. The sponsored and bursars tend to go in, providing they maintain their medical category, tend to go in 100%. The VRs, uh, volunteer reserves, would tend to um, produce about 33% of our students would go on to further training. In an era which has seen the lessening of East-West tension, do the University Air Squadrons have a part to play in the future of the RAF? I think it's essential that the RAF maintains a balanced force for some years to come. As we've seen, we don't have very many years before there is some tension in which we're asked to play a part. The Air Force relies on the University Air Squadrons because it is essential that we have uh, men and women of high mental agility, and these young people go to universities. And therefore, we need to get into the universities to get an interest or get them to have an interest uh, at a very early stage so that we can recruit them into the Air Force. Squadron Leader, which University Air Squadron is the eldest at Woodvale? Uh, my squadron, Liverpool, which moved here from Hooton Park in July 1951. How many students are usually under training at any one time? It does vary throughout the year, but normally we have 48. And where do you recruit your students from normally? For, although it's Liverpool University Air Squadron, I take students from, obviously, Liverpool University, the University of Lancaster, Liverpool Polytechnic, and Lancashire Polytechnic in Preston. Number 10, Air Experience Flight, under the command of Flight Lieutenant Ray Pynchon, forms an important part of Woodvale's role in training non-university pilots. Founder member Flight Lieutenant Alan Pimblett 
defines air experience as having three objectives. The first is to encourage a wider interest in all matters concerning aviation. The second, to maintain motivation throughout the training period as it lets the young people practice the skills learnt on the ground. Thirdly, it increases the amount of flying time available and helps promote recruitment to the Air Training Corps ranks. A pilot's life depends upon the aircraft he is flying. For this reason alone, the skills of the ground support staff are vital in ensuring that all craft are well maintained and in tip-top condition. Constant use and complex manoeuvres push these aircraft to their limit. Pilot and machine close to the edge. Central to the smooth and safe running of any airbase are the staff of the air traffic control. They must keep an eye open at all times for a host of variables. Even in the quietest moments they must be ready to respond to any event that may suddenly occur. The wartime map of Woodvale has now been reinstated on the tower. From the air traffic control tower, the base's nerve centre, all movements and activities are monitored before being given flight clearance. University Air Squadron cadets, having received permission, take off for a training flight. The first one taxis slowly before accelerating along the runway and becoming airborne. Colleague follows closely behind. Self discipline and trust in colleagues are key to achieving such precision and coordination. The slightest lapse of concentration could have disastrous consequences. The session over, the pilots return to base wiser than when they left. The Reed Trophy is a major highlight of both the social and flying calendars. It is a time to meet colleagues from other university squadrons in a spirit of friendly rivalry. Barbecues and briefings give way to bulldogs as machines are made ready for this gruelling test. Adjudicators monitor and mark each competitor through every stage from take-off to landing. were as follows. Third place overall was awarded to Northumbrian UAS. The second place in the competition went to Yorkshire UAS. And today's overall winners in the Reed Trophy held here at Woodvale this afternoon, Manchester UAS. Mark 
marches and ceremonies by 610 Chester ATC Squadron marked the start of the Jubilee celebrations. The band played on as old friends of Woodvale returned to spend a pleasant evening. Fast multi roll tornado jet heralds the start of the preparations. The Harrier descends in its own inimitable way. A tiger moth still going strong after all these years, trundles sedately by. The larger naval Lynx and Sea King helicopters make an impressive appearance. With the aircraft neatly arrayed, small groups of specially invited guests inspect and enjoy at their leisure. The following day, crowds are assembling on the beach near the pier for the first Southport Air Show. They are waiting for the breathtaking spectacle to begin. The excitement rises as John Harper, the top-rated stunt pilot, puts the fabulous Extra 230 through its breathtaking routines. The three helicopters, a Scout, a Lynx and a Gazelle, forming the Army Air Corps Eagles team, fly in close formation. One of the highlights of the display in this jubilee year is the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. This was formed 25 years ago in honour of the RAF's glorious past in the defence of our islands from the Nazi eagles. Flares on the water's edge signal the start of the Falcon's amazing display of control and coordination. 
Nicknamed after the bird with a reputation for lethal accuracy when diving for prey, the RAF free fall parachute display team leave the audience breathless. Plunging from a huge Hercules transporter two miles high, their coloured smoke trails weave intricate patterns in the sky. When all are safely down, they receive the warm applause of the onlookers as the Hercules performs a low-level flight past. At last they're here. Magnificent red arrows streak across the sky in their famous V formation. Royal Air Force Wood Vale, created at the height of the Blitz following the Battle of Britain, serving faithfully throughout the wartime era, home to brave men and women, and sometimes a final resting place. Steadfast throughout the peacetime years, into the new jet age, and through the Cold War. Wood Vale has done more than anyone could ask of a temporary base providing many top flight men and women from university and air training corps with countless hours of valuable flying experience. After 50 years, Woodvale has achieved much and as the Jubilee celebrations come to a close, yet another generation takes over, looking forward to the future. No matter what the ever-changing years bring, the spirit and courage that these young people have inherited will see us safely through. Woodvale will always have pride in the part it plays, now and in the next 50 years. <laughs>